it's cast on day. So I'm pretty excited to get started with my Inara wrap. I hope you are too. Um, right away, there's a couple things I wanna point out at the beginning of the pattern that you might wanna take notice of. First of all, you're gonna cast on the required number of stitches. But I want you to take notice that right away in the beginning, the cast on row is the setup row. Okay, so unlike most patterns where the cast on row is separate and then you begin with row one, the cast on row is row one in this particular pattern. So take note of that, okay? And then, uh, let's see. Take notice right away in the second line it says all further instances of row one is going to be where you start your next color, whatever that is for whatever pairing you're doing. So as I said in the setup or the preparation video, just make sure you have all your little mini cupcake skeins labeled appropriately so you know what's A1, 2, 3, 4, and so forth. So you keep yourself on track with all that. Okay. So let's get busy and I'll show you uh, my technique that I'm going to try. We'll see how it works out. It's maybe a learning process for us both. Um, whenever we change colors, you're going to have a tail end that you're going to need to figure out how to weave in. So you'll need a darning needle for that. Or I'm going to try a technique where I'm going to try to weave it in as I go, being careful to only do that uh, where I'm weaving in the tail with the same color. So I'll show you what I mean. All right, let's get started. All right, I've done my cast on and I've knitted row two, which is just straight up. I've come to the point where I have my first color change. So I wanted to just show you quickly how, how I'm going to, I'm gonna see how this works out. Um, it may be a situation where we have to regroup and do something different, but I'm gonna do my first color change. I'm gonna choose not to tie knots or anything. Um, I'm just gonna loop over my second color here all right, so I've pulled through that first stitch. Then what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take the tail of my contrasting color here and bring it up behind with my left hand. And when I knit this next one, in a similar way when you carry a float when you're doing color work, I'm gonna bring this tail up and over that back needle, my working needle, and I'm gonna wrap counterclockwise in preparation to knit, and then I'm gonna take this back over the back because I don't wanna pull that tail through. I just want it to be up and over my working yarn that's coming from the skein. And then I'm going to just pull it down over the over it a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and do my next stitch, the third one, which will trap that tail in. So let me show you that again. I'm going to go in regular, just like a regular knit stitch, bring this tail up and over my working needle, do your knitting wrap, and then bring the tail back down. Okay. Then go ahead and pull your knit stitch through like normal. Do your next knit stitch and see what that does is your next knit stitch, when you wrap your working yarn, that's gonna trap that in behind. All right, so let's do it again and then we'll look and see what how that appears from the backside and if that's gonna be neat enough. So again, I'm gonna just bring my tail up and over the working needle behind wrap your knit stitch but then flip that back over so it's because you don't want to pull it through with your working yarn you just want it to be in a position where the next knit stitch you do it's going to be trapped down pinned down all right so what now let's turn this around and see and see how that looks okay see there that's going to work pretty well you can't even hardly tell that it's there and that again that's going to be on the wrong side or the back side of the work and then I don't have a tail to weave in at all. So I'll do a few more because I, I mean, I wanna do half a dozen or so just to make sure that's um, nicely secured. But I think I would rather carry on this way than have a whole bunch of tails to weave in at the end when I'm done with my shawl. And that, that's how we do it when we carry colors behind in uh, stranded color work. Okay, so when you feel like you've either used up the whole tail or you've, you know, when you've secured that to your liking, then you can just simply drop that tail and we'll just trim, trim those off. But, you know, here I've woven that in for a couple of inches over, you know, the course of, I don't know, what is that, 10 or 12 stitches? So I think that's sufficiently secure. Now I'm just going to go ahead with the pattern. All right, it's looking really good. I've knitted through the first 44 rows of the pattern. And so I've done the color changes a couple of different times. Um, I did that technique that I was showed you a moment ago where I, I uh, trapped the ends as I went along. 
Um, you know, this one is a little bit high because I brought it up behind. So maybe, I don't know, maybe I would do that that way again, maybe not. Um, and then the other one, like the very first cast on tail end, I just took a darning needle and wove that in in the back. So that technique may not work for absolutely every single one, but it will certainly mitigate the number of things, uh, tail ends that you have to weave in at the end. So now I'm ready to begin uh, my second color sequence and, you know, repeat this 44 row sequence. So this was color um, A1, B1. And so now I'm ready to go with A2, B2. And so I tend to be a little nerdy about things like this. And I was a little bit concerned that I would get stuff mixed up, you know. So, so I did my little labels when I wound my mini cakes. But also... I was worried about, uh, you know, I had all my little cakes lined up on the table with their little tags, but I was still concerned. I have some gradients that are really close in shades and I didn't want to risk messing that up. So I have this, I'm so nerdy. I have this little FedEx box. Here, I'll show you. And what I did, um, I just made this little divider. I cut off the tabs and I made this little divider. So here's A1, B1, and then here's three, four, and five. So I have my pairs all set up so I don't, mess it up and then these are the ones I'm working with currently. So these are just to house the ones that I'm not working with because I don't I want them to stay in place in their pairs. So I realize you may not be that OCD and that's fine. Um, but yeah, that's my my setup so I can just stick it in my drawer overnight uh, so my mischievous cats won't mess up my system. So the other thing I want to mention real quick is I, I prefer to use my yarn from, let it spool off from the outside of the cake rather than the center because I hate it when it collapses down on itself. And then if you don't use the whole thing, you have to rewind it anyway. Um, so I just use it from the outside of the cake to start with. All right, so I've added in my next color now and I'm carrying on with uh, actually I've added in my next couple of colors. So this is A2 and B2. So I'm keeping track with my little cardboard box and now I'm moving on. I'm, you know, you're going to want to keep track of your rows, do whatever works for you. Uh, the post-it note thing or just making hash marks. Um, I've got this counter ring that I'm using on my thumb, which I'm kind of enjoying. So I'll put a link to where you can get a hold of that. And what it is, it's actually designed originally for uh, video gaming. I think it was a way to do video game lives. Um, but you just push and then turn. So that's pretty cool. Um, you can uh, wear it on your forefinger or your thumb. And yeah, I'm really, I'm really kind of digging that. Okay, so we've gotten a really good start on the Inara wrap. Um, join me next time and we'll talk some more about different techniques, including lifelines, um, the central double decrease that you're going to run into here shortly when you start the lace section and you get into that. We'll talk about lifelines so that if you, um, if you tend to, if you drop a stitch or you make a mistake during the lace section and you need to tear it back, how you can not lose your place. So look for those in separate videos, uh, coming up in between these episodes. So I hope that makes sense. All right. As always, like, and subscribe down below. I really appreciate your support and feel free to join us in the groups. Take care.